Hi, welcome for coming to this session, folks. It's a great turnout. So uh, my name is Brian Stewart. I work for Arctic Wolf as a, uh, a sales engineer, systems engineer, technical account manager. I've been called so many different things working for vendors, but I'm the technical guy before you buy something. Uh, and in this case, it's Arctic Wolf's um, security service that we're going to talk to you about. So um, hands up, show, show of hands in the room, really. Who's heard of Arctic Wolf already before you saw this session? Advertised, yeah. Okay, so a few. Um, our name's not majorly out there in Scotland. Be, being honest, we're, we're myself and Murray, who's the sales guy that I work with, been in Scotland for about four months now. In the UK, Arctic Wolf's been going for uh, almost two years. Uh, but we are a much more uh, mature company than that. We've been operating in North America for some 12 years now in the US and Canada. So that in itself lets us do some cool stuff to get the, the brand out there. Um, like if anyone's a petrol head like me and follows the F1, we're on Red Bull's F1 cars and on the overalls, etc. Uh, and because we took them on as a customer, uh, we're doing a sponsorship of Wolverhampton Wolves as well, uh, FC down south. So yeah, we're definitely out there and we, we will become more well known doing more of these kind of events and, and advertising. Uh, so the, the, the title that we went with for this session today was really just an acknowledgement of uh, the dozens of calls that we've had with customers since, since starting in Scotland. Uh, and, and that common theme, speaking to a typical customer in Scotland, that they're a small IT team, there's not usually a dedicated CISO, you've got a guy wearing multiple hats and a couple of guys supporting them, you know, not, not a massive amount of resource. So, uh, the typical conversation goes is that they've got all these alerts and they don't know how to interpret them. They might go to a help desk mailbox on a Friday. Someone might get to it if they've got the chance, right? Uh, but they've got other things to be doing, right, that are more critical to the business. So, um, yeah, so how do you do that and how do you uh, be proactive about cybersecurity and improve your cybersecurity posture over time without going out and hiring the 8 to 12 security analysts Gartner reckons you need for a 24 by 7 SOC? I know that number is de debatable, but that's a kind of a line in the sand. So when we uh, came to market uh, in the UK, we, we went out to the, the local user base and we did a, a survey of IT leaders. Uh, and this was the, the, some of the feedback that we got from this, from this questionnaire. So um, I found it very interesting. So 73% of organizations feel like their in-house te uh, technical teams lack capacity or expertise to fend off a ransomware attack or associated cyber threats. So that's, like, that's a very high number, right? 39% of teams uh, find the number of alerts and the noise that that generates unmanageable, very overwhelming. 55% of ignored uh, known security incidents because they had other stuff that they had to prioritize. And I, I'm very surprised how often I hear that from customers on you know, private meetings with them. Uh, one in five, incredible, have ignored security alerts altogether, right? And that's the whole point of the topic of the session. Um, because you've got other stuff to be doing. It's, it's low priority, the alert that may or may not be a threat. And how do you interpret uh, the signal and the noise, right? If you're getting thousands of alerts every week, how, how do you prioritize that in some way and do something meaningful with it? <clears throat> so why aren't IT leaders feeling confident? And this is kind of setting the scene about, about what Arctic Wolf defines as cyber risk. So the likelihood of an incident is escalating. 69% um, of organizations breached in the last year, so some of them multiple times. I know, Murray, we talked about a recent stat, I think, was it Forrester? Uh, basically saying that 80% of companies that were breached got breached again in, in a short time frame because that vulnerability is still unplugged. Pretty incredible. 82% um, of incidents are by exposure of a, a known vulnerability. So if you think about that, published CVEs, stuff that people are aware of, they can find out the information. If they're doing some sort of risk management, they might be aware. But again, it comes back to resourcing of enough people to do the patching of all their, their different endpoints and servers, et cetera, to take care of those security vulnerabilities. So um, the impact of an incident is also escalating, which is the, the other side of this. Um, so the, the bad guys, on average, are in customer environments for over six months going undetected, doing the reconnaissance work, working out how to hurt you. You're working out, out what the crown jewel systems are, what the key data is, 
the stuff that they're going to encrypt and then to demand a ransomware payment for, uh, to, for you to get the security keys to continue uh, business operations. Uh, 70 days time to contain when, when an incident happens, and we've seen a bunch of well-publicised breaches even in Scotland, right, and those companies are admitting it's challenging to contain the incident, especially if they want to not pay the ransom. Uh, the average cost of a data breach, uh, take that with a pinch of salt, right, it depends on whose numbers you're looking at. Um, this is just the average company that was, that was uh, surveyed. Again, I think this is Forrester's stat uh, that that comes from. But we actually have a, a kind of a cost of breach calculator on our UK website that you can use as kind of evidence of to your business of this is what a breach might cost us, thinking about things like not just resolving the incident, but reputational damage and your know, analysts that you need to consult with and kind of press stuff that you need to do uh, around that breach. So this is what we define as cyber risk, and it's ever increasing. These aren't product failures, right? There's over 3,000 security products and tools on the market. They're not all rubbish, right? Most of them are good, some of them are very good. They give useful security insight. They're operational failures, right? It's a people and process problem. It's what you do with that technology. <clears throat> So looking at the state of security operations at customers today, um, most of them have done the basics, right? You, know, you wouldn't be in business if you hadn't done the basics. They've also secured the perimeter. They've got firewalls, spam, web filters, etc. cetera. Uh, and they'll have elements of defense in depth. So endpoint security born out of you know, antivirus, anti-malware. Uh, and they may have ventured down the road of trying to implement a SIEM as well. Uh, but that's, that's a, a hard thing to do, right? Because you then need to be able to interpret all of these feeds that you're putting into your SIEM tool and do something with it. And again, that comes back to a resource issue. So security analysts, right, are, are expensive people. Um, there is a shortage of cybersecurity people in the millions globally. So they're very hard to attract and employ in the first place. Uh, and they're hard to retain because you know, they got offered a job elsewhere with more money, they're going to do that. If they're not fulfilled at their current job, they're not getting the career advancement they might want or the experience that they might want. So that's where we come in, right? So there's a gap to this state of true business resilience that, that companies and organizations are trying to get to, where they are proactive about their security monitoring and their uh, risk management. They're confident that they most likely won't be breached, but they, they can recover from the incident if it were to happen. Uh, they're compliant with whatever regulatory frameworks that they need to adhere to in their uh, industry, and that they can get cyber insurance. I mean, that's a, an issue uh, in itself. When I speak to customers, they say, you know, right now we've got our cyber insurance renewal. Uh, last year it was this amount, and it was a 10-page document of hoops that I had to jump through. This year the policy amount's gone massively up, and it's a 50-page you know, document that I'm having, hoops that I'm trying to, to jump to to prove to them that I'm worthy to take on and, and insure to cover the cyber risk. So that gap in the middle is where Arctic Wolf comes in. So we're the people and process expertise of cybersecurity. Uh, and we work to the NIST framework, right? You, you, you'll all have heard of that, right? So five pillars, identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. And we can help with each element of that framework. Or if there's a framework you'd rather align to with us working with you, we, we can do that as well, right? It depends on who you are and what your requirements are. <clears throat> so how do we do it? We do it with our security operations cloud. So it starts with your telemetry. So we don't want you to rip and replace you know, your favorite endpoint uh, vendor, your favorite firewall. Um, we, we don't want to, you to deploy a whole bunch of new stuff. We want you to send your telemetry to our security operations cloud. And we're going to do some clever stuff with that telemetry in that security operations cloud, the Arctic Wolf platform. Now, this was incepted some 12 odd years ago to be open and vendor neutral. So we have some 80 plus and ever increasing vendor integrations uh, to take detailed telemetry via API uh, and do clever stuff with it in the platform. So send the telemetry to us from the endpoints. You might be, I don't know, throwing it out there, Defender today and you're looking at CrowdStrike because you like them for, for, for endpoint. 
that's fine by us. We, we'll take feeds from either. Other customers I've seen looking to kind of cost optimize with, with taking on this kind of service. And they'll maybe say, oh, I've got a Microsoft agreement and, and that gets me Defender for next to nothing and that's actually pretty effective, so I'll do that. Uh, that's fine by us as well. Um, the network side, we're not going to tell you to replace whatever firewall you've got today. If it's Sonic Wall and you're moving to Fortinet or what have you, I know there's been a lot of kind of vulnerabilities announced, and that's why people might be thinking of moving. But again, there's there's security data that you can get from a firewall that's useful, right? But in context, it's useful. If you look at a firewall log and it's on, it's churning at a million miles an hour of stuff. How do you make sense of all that? It's really hard. Um, now, for cloud, uh, we have API integrations uh, into their security feed. So again, we can take that telemetry into our, our platform for your infrastructure as a service uh, environment or, or software as a service environment. So the main ones we cover, in fact, the, the main one that customers are most interested in uh, having coverage for is Office 365, so right, M365. So we have API integration there. Um, we also do um, other API integrations like Salesforce.com, if you're using that, or Box.com, uh, G Suite. These are other kind of places we can take API feeds of telemetry into our platform for. Uh, and also across identity, so very much related to 0365, we have AD telemetry integration to see what's going on from an identity perspective. Uh, and also uh, multi-factor authentication integration with the likes of Okta, Duo, and, and Microsoft. Uh, so this lets us build up a contextual picture, right? All this telemetry coming into the platform. Uh, we're using uh, AI and machine learning to uh, sort through that noise, hone in on the signal and the noise, uh, and populate a triage board. Uh, and we, we work that triage board in order of priority according to what the platform has found. Now, that, that contextualization uh, might be something like you've, you've onboarded with our service, uh, we've agreed with you that your organization normally operates in the UK and maybe some parts of mainland Europe. That's fine. We understand that. So if we see one of your users trying to log in from Zimbabwe with tw 20 failed login attempts, then a successful login attempt, and then we see them in 0365 uh, uh, adding strange uh, mailbox rules to hide certain emails with certain terms in them, that's all telemetry that we can see in the platform at this point is going to say that plus that, that's known indicators of compromise for this kind of attack and it'll flag that up to the triage board uh, and our, our, our human expertise will then be involved. That's what this service is about when I say we're the people in process uh, side of cyber security. The triage team gives you that 24 by 7 SOC coverage, the continuous monitoring, uh, and these are subscription services. So our bread and butter is managed detection and response, that 24 by 7 coverage uh, monitoring of your environments based on all of these, these threat feeds, uh, sorry, telemetry feeds, and also threat intelligence from our own uh, internal threat intelligence, Arctic Wolf Labs. Um, and that, on this platform today, there's over 3,500 customers, so it is, as I say, very mature. Uh, and that means we've got such a wealth of telemetry and the numbers are mind boggling. We, we are uh, processing uh, more events on this platform uh, by a factor of 100x than Google is processing search terms. So that's massive across all of those, uh, across all of the, that customer base, right? So uh, if we see something new that's not a known threat, uh, we will work to uh, identify the indicators of compromise and then publish that to the security community. And actually, you're, you're seeing that once and then preventing for all of your customers because you uh, build those rules into the engine, into the, the technology, to be able to protect the rest of the customer base. So that's why it's good to have that kind of broad coverage ac across uh, multiple customers. Uh, the, the second element is managed risk, and that's more about continuous vulnerability scanning, the, the being proactive both external uh, web servers and application services uh, and internal vulnerability scanning of endpoints and servers and so on. Uh, understanding what the uh, software catalog looks like on those, understanding kind of uh, open ports and IP addresses and what communications are ta is taking place, what processes are running. Uh, all that is part of managed risk and continuous vulnerability scanning. Uh, and the third element that, that plays into the human side of this is we do manage security awareness, and that's the, the end user cybersecurity training. I, I won't labor on that too much, because I know most people I speak to actually have something in place there. 
But that's our acknowledgement that that is a critical part of the whole cyber attack surface. You, you have to address the human element. So we do the little and often approach of uh, videos to use our mailboxes on a bi-weekly schedule. By default, that's um, just very succinct current uh, cybersecurity stuff, like for example, uh, stuff in the news around uh, someone being breached because they were at an airport using unsecured Wi-Fi. We'll do a module in that, so it's always current and topical, and we have our own actors to come up with that content and constantly refresh it, and we will manage that for you, rather than you having to pick your own content, curate what looks good for your organization and send that out. We'll also do simulated phishing uh, on a monthly schedule by default, and we'll do all the reporting and stuff around that. Again, to help you comply with regulatory requirements, frameworks, and also cyber insurance, so you can prove all of this stuff. Same goes for each of these um, services that you subscribe to. So the human element is what we call the, the concierge delivery model. And the, the triage team is one part of that, right? That's the reactive piece. There is another uh, side of it, which I'll come to in a moment. Uh, but another important point here around telemetry is if you stand up your own SIEM um, or you uh, try to go with a managed uh, security service based on one of the, the common SIEM tools, uh, then you're usually picking your favorite children that you want to go to university from a telemetry point of view because there's a cost associated, an events per second type cost or a gigabytes of, of log data type cost associated with it. So we, we view that as a bad way of going about things, right? We, we want the full cyber attack surface. We want the context of what's going on uh, in a customer environment, east to west and north south. Uh, so we do unlimited data ingestion as part of the subscription. By default, we'll keep logs and telemetry data for 90 days, but we can do up to 10 years if you want us to as well. Again, depending on what, what regulatory requirements you might have. <clears throat> So to, to the title, that this is how we get to the end of alert fatigue. So sending your telemetry out to us and making use of our service, a combination of technology and, and human expertise, uh, takes you down from, you know, across our customer base. Uh, we're observing over 400 billion events per day, and actually that's really a moving feast. That's as of when this, this was published, you know. Um, and th the numbers are boggling because we as a business uh, are growing double year in year for the last five years in, in every measurable metric in terms of headcount, customer base, etc. So we're a very high growth company. Uh, and this cloud platform we've built is making use of, it's actually based in AWS and it's a uh, Frankfurt region for, for uh, EU uh, that we're operating out of that availability zone. Um, and we're just making such heavy use of their AI machine learning, compute power, et cetera, and S3 storage for how we uh, do the pipelining of the telemetry and logs into our platform. So we go from massive amounts of events that we are processing in real time. Uh, and we're doing clever stuff there, right, because we're parsing uh, the logs because um, an endpoint log or a piece of telemetry and a firewall uh, log would look vastly different, right? So it's trying to standardize them. Uh, and then contextualize them uh, by giving uh, stuff like uh, enrichment, uh, things like um, reputation of DNS, IP addresses. So we, we do that kind of thing. We do geolocation, so we understand where that's communicating uh, in the world. So this all takes you down to millions of events uh, by doing the kind of AI machine learning processing. And then we have some complex algorithms that we apply that are very much custom to let us get down further, honing in the, the signal and the noise. So we get down to thousands of investigations, and that's where the human experts come in, that's where the triage team is eyes on glass, looking at what the platform has come up with, uh, and then investigating all the sources involved and, and why that uh, was alerted upon to them. Uh, that gets us down to only hundreds of, of incidents, which is less than five tickets per week per customer on average. Now, that average is, uh, again, a bit of a moving face in that we, we have customers that are kind of 50 users uh, thereabouts, right up to pretty commonly maybe 5,000 users. But we do have uh, one in, in the US I know of that's about 60,000 users. So we've got a really broad range of, of the size of, and shape of organization that we can help. So that's a massive um, noise elimination. We really hone in the signal and the noise of what's important. Uh, and then if we do alert you, uh, this, this leads to the accuracy of this combination of technology and people leads to 99.9% .9 true positives. So that, that's unique to us, right? It's, um, that's pretty massive. 
uh, instead of getting thousands of alerts into a mailbox that you've got to filter through, you know if you get a ticket from us and somebody's proactively reaching out to you uh, to investigate something, you know, you know it's real, you need to take notice. Okay? Uh, so the other side of the human expertise, so the triage team being the reactive piece, is our concierge security engineers. Uh, and that's two named people for anyone that onboards Antarctic Wolf's service that become an extension of your IT team. Uh, so they get to know your business, to, to know your architecture, your key applications, uh, your, your times when you're busy, busiest, all that kind of contextual stuff. Uh, and they will work with you once you're onboarded to draw a line in the sand of what your current cybersecurity posture looks like uh, and then map out a security journey to improve your security posture over time. So the longer that you're on the service, the better your security posture becomes. So uh, those are people that it quite literally is named people. So it might be Billy and Sue or your aligned concierge security engineers. They're available in business hours. You have unlimited contact uh, with them through, you've got their phone number, their email address, et cetera. Uh, and we'll do initially a monthly schedule of, of um, planned meetings with them to, to go through how things are going uh, and maybe move that to quarterly depending on how you're getting on. But the point is we don't limit your access to them. And for the, the reactive piece, the triage team's got your back. They're giving you the 24 by 7 uh, coverage. So what does that look like? So from a proactive point of view, so if you're on board with the Arctic Wolf service, it typically takes um, around 30 days on average, or up to 45 days. We have done it as quickly as, as five days when it was a customer that contacted us panicking because they had been breached and they, they wanted our help very quickly to fix it and remediate the problem. Uh, so it's really how quickly we can, we, we, we give you a network sensor typically that sits behind the firewall to let us do north-south inspection. We do have an agent that you would deploy in, uh, endpoints and virtual servers, etc. Not from an existing endpoint technology point of view, because that's all about antivirus, anti-malware. Um, it's more about a point of containment and a, a point of threat intelligence. That's why we've got a very lightweight agent. It doesn't need a restart, it's very low resource. Uh, but it's very useful for us to understand stuff moving laterally in your environment as, as well as the stuff that's egressing to the internet. So once you're ready, you're into production, we go live. Uh, and then at that stage, that's when the security journey begins with your name concierge security engineers. So that first 90 days is about proactive security hardening in your environment, so optimization. So doing that kickoff call with your named people, looking at your current architecture so they understand the lay of the land for your organization, uh, doing an initial health check, and that might include reviews of things like log sources, so the telemetry that we can see, are there any blind spots that we need to consider? Uh, looking at your firewall configuration, are there any legacy rules in there that someone put in for testing five years ago and they left and, and nobody knows why that rule's still in the firewall, right? Open IP ranges and ports that shouldn't be in there. We'll, we'll do an active directory review, looking at users and groups, who's in the admin group that shouldn't be, all that kind of stuff, looking at maybe legacy artifacts that are leaving you exposed. Uh, and we'll look at endpoint hard hardening, so stuff like um, only uh, executing signed PowerShell scripts and only certain people being able to access that kind of stuff and use those tools. Uh, and then we'll do your first review with us and then you're in this steady state journey roadmap and we might focus on certain areas of security posture with you from then, depending on what we've worked from that line in sand. So that, that initial benchmarking of your security posture is based on the, the CIS critical security controls. So we'll do something called a cyber defense maturity assessment to, to, to analyze your current security posture and then map out this journey of what's, what's, what's the easy wins in your environment to improve your posture uh, and where you want to get to over time if that's you know, uh, comply, compliance requirements, re regulatory requirements, et cetera. Uh, and these are called security posture in-depth reviews in these different focus areas. And there's like 100 plus of these uh, that you can do. And it might be very specific looking at stuff like firewalls and Active Directory on a particular basis or endpoint hardening in different ways. So many ways that we can help there proactively. And like I said, the triage team's doing the 24 by 7 piece. They've got your back. Uh, so if there is an incident and it's some sort of ransomware incident, for example, um, We'll then initiate an ad hoc um, security detour with you. So uh, that's when the triage team in business hours hands over to your named concierge security engineers to say there's been this incident. Here's what we did to remediate it. 
here's the weaknesses that we uncovered, and now let's map out a journey that improves your posture in that specific area. And then you go back to the steady state once you've, you've looked at that, because that's a weakness or a vulnerability that we've found. <clears throat> uh, one more thing, just to set the scene. How am I doing for time? All right. I think I'm all that stands between us and lunch. So, <laughs> uh, so walk me through a real incident that happened with one of our utilities customer, and it was a ransomware containment incident. So this company had been on the platform a while. Uh, so the key here is the platform, our triage reactive security analysts, the customer itself, and then the proactive concierge security engineers. Uh, so this happened 5.53 p.m. We detected a possible malicious encoded PowerShell script uh, and it was the platform picking up and uh, suspicious encoded obfuscated load string. I always say, don't try and say that when you've had a few. That's a very <laughs> bit of a tongue twister. Uh, and what it was doing was uh, changing a lo local admin password. Uh, so that flagged as suspicious activity, right? So an investigation gets triggered and that's based on indicators of compromise from the Arctic Wolf Labs division. Um, we correlate that with other known indicators of compromise to do with what that kind of attack might be. Uh, that incident very quickly is urgently um, given to the triage team to work. It's put on their dashboard with an urgent status. Then at 5.58, they start investigating. They find a scheduled task created by PowerShell, and that's consistent with something called Goot Loader, you may have heard of. It's a multi-stage JavaScript package likely dropped into the environment through following a, a dodgy Google AdWords search result, for example, search engine optimization poisoning. Uh, it's highly probable the secondary payload was to be ransomware from a threat actor group like Revil, right? because that's what we know from those indicators of compromise for what was going on here. So at 6.01, we automatically contain the endpoint. Now, that's something that we agree with you when you're on board to the service. Do you want us to automatically contain, or do you want us just to reach out to you and say, here's what's going on, there's something that you need to contain. We, we can do it either way. Or you may want to just do it out of hours, because many of these threats happen, or incidents happen out of hours, because the bad guys know it's, it's when you're most vulnerable, right? So 601, we have automatically contained in this case. That prevented Gootloader from launching a secondary payload or connecting with a command and control uh, server, so a known bad server out there for beaconing. Then at 6.05, that's when we're alerting the customer. We're reaching out to them proactively, saying there's been a problem, we've contained it. Uh, here's the remediation steps that you now need to do to, to stop this being a further problem. So we ticketed the incident and reached out. Um, the, we make the recommendation to reset the passwords to the compromised admin and service accounts. The customer, in this case, decides to uh, re-image the infected device. And it doesn't stop there, right? That could be end of story, because we've done the guided remediation after containing automatically. But no, we, we want to be proactive and help you to improve so that kind of thing doesn't happen again. So uh, then uh, next business day, business hours, uh, triage team hands over the incident to your name, concierge security engineers, uh, and they work with you to see how you might improve your posture related to that specific incident or that kind of incident. In this case, enforcing, enforcing stricter controls over egress traffic uh, implementing uh, browser control settings to lock them down more, uh, implementing policies around uh, PowerShell for just enough permissions, and only executing signed scripts is, is good, good or best practice. Um, using Windows 10 uh, app locker or in that particular environment for validating PowerShell scripts and also recommending other areas of technology you might, you might want to look at to improve your posture in, in this specific area. Uh, but because this was due to a user clicking on a dodgy Google AdWords link and putting in their corporate credentials, and that's how the attack happened in the first place, the recommendation is, well, you want to do some end-user cybersecurity awareness training. We can help you with that or using the program that you have in place. The key takeaways here, it was a, a, a malware ransomware incident. The platform picked up on the problem in under a minute, um, and it was something like 12 minutes. Uh, to get to actually containing, sorry, eight minutes, and then uh, reaching out to the customer within, within 12 minutes. And, and that's our SLAs, that we'll do this within 30 minutes or less. We, we, we won't just 
throw you an alert, right? That six months, the bad guys in your environment, it goes down to 30 minutes or less uh, with our service. Uh, we'll check that it is a real incident and only then are we going to bother you as the customer. You will get weekly reporting and all this kind of stuff, what we're doing, the amount of stuff that we're processing, what we actually found that was real, you'll see all that kind of stuff. And any telemetry that comes into our platform, we can create custom reports based on it. So if you have a particular uh, proof point you need to give to your boards, we can work with you uh, to do that. So you working with your concierge security engineers to come up with that evidence that you need internally. Um, so yeah, end-to-end, uh, -end, uh, very quickly detected, verified it was real and taken care of, contained and, and customer alerted very quickly. The data sources in, in this case was Arctic Wolf Agent and Sysmon running uh, on the endpoint combined with the, the, the platform interpreting and contextualizing what was going on. So uh, back, to the, back to the start, so how do you um, reduce alert fatigue and, and improve your cybersecurity posture with limited resources? We think you need to switch your thinking to a tools mindset, from a tools mindset to more of an operational mindset, through the likes of what we've walked you through. So optimize your existing tech, tech stack, send your uh, security telemetry to us to, to, to interpret it properly. Embrace security operations rather than just more tools and products in your environment that you need to make sense of. Uh, so work with us to give, give you broad coverage across your attack. Uh, surface rather than just being as many customers are really focused on endpoint protection because the cyber attack surface is much wider than that and it's seeing the whole attack surface that lets you hone in what the threat might be in your environment. Uh, the analogy I give is, you know, um, would, would you rather know about a burglar on your video doorbell or from the noise they're making when they're ransacking your house? Right? So, so <laughs> that's kind of what we're getting to with this. So build resilience as well, get to that top right state of true business resilience uh, by adding our expert guidance, giving you the 24 by 7 coverage and being proactive about improving your cybersecurity posture over time. That was it. Any questions? Anyone? I think someone's got a microphone if anyone does want to ask anything. <clears throat> Go on, Murray. <laughs> or Demos in the back, I know you. <laughs> right, go on, Gary. We get a microphone. Yep, yep. I think it's for the video feed because it's recorded. Ah, okay. So you talked about um, taking action automatically if the customer agrees to it, right? And that's perfectly fair, mate. Depending on your business size, that's a, a perfectly reasonable choice. But what happens at 6.02, I've told you not to do anything, and another incident kicks off. It's a, it's a real incident. 6.03, another one kicks off. 6.04, another one. 6.05, there's 100 of them kicking off at once. How does Arctic Wolf see that? Um, so we understand if it's related to the same incident, right? And when you're on board with us as an organization, we, we take who the main contacts are, and it might be for different things. So to understand if it's something related to endpoint ransomware incident and some vulnerability that's in common across 100 endpoints, we can understand that, right? The platform will flag that up and the, the triage team will know that there's multiple alerts of the same type and they're going to reach out to you and say, this incident involves multiple endpoints and they're going to work you through what the remediation is to fix that at that point. So you have kind of predefined escalation points is probably part of that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you have a primary contact typically and an escalation point, at least one escalation point, depending on the, the type of incident, uh, and maybe a different escalation point if it's an out of hours incident. Yeah, well, yeah, right, and, and that's, you know, it's not like you're on board with us and then we run away and hide in a corner, right? That's the point in the two name concierge security engineers, is to constantly look at are the right people uh, at the contact points and are, are there the right escalation points and enough of them in place 
because there was some, some event that happened and we couldn't get anyone, right? If we automatically contain, great. And we, we have a couple of opportunities to contain. If you've got our agent deployed, which isn't mandatory, but we highly recommend it, um, we can contain there. Or if you have our, our network sensor deployed and it's in line with the firewall, we can do containment at the network sensor as well. Microphone. Microphone. Uh, no, uh, what I was actually thinking of, um, in, in line of what you said, like uh, for, for one company coming in with new incidents and how you come yep. and react to that. Uh, what about if there's a uh, uh, the, the same issue or a lot of uh, issues that uh, happen to um, uh, a lot of your clients at the same time? Yep. How do you prioritize? Yeah, uh, so that goes back to the general staffing problem, right? So, sorry, to repeat the question, I don't know if that was clear on the audio, but it's around if multiple of our customers uh, have multiple alerts happening at the same, same time, right? Like some sort of mega event that, that we've seen, like Log4j, for example, is, is a good one to, to reference there. Um, we uh, understand that, right? And we try to resource uh, both our triage teams and our um, concierge security engineer teams appropriately, but it's a struggle for any company, right, to recruit enough people of the, the right experience uh, and have them there at the right time. But we try to address that through our SLA with you that we're going to um, identify in 30 minutes or less and, and alert you and guide you through the remediation. But right, that, that is the point. Um, how do we cope with it? We, thankfully, we've got a lot of security analysts and our retention rate is over 95%, right, of keeping security veterans with 10 to 15 years plus experience uh, are Arctic Wolf because they like the variety, right? Because, you know, guys that have set up big bank socks and got bored because it was one environment that we we're dealing with. Um, people that are ex-military cybersecurity coming across to Arctic Wolf because they've got a career path and they can work with multiple customers. So that's how we attract and retain them and how we promote and, of course, we pay them well because this is, this is a service that we're providing. It's, it's obviously for profit. If... Um an event like that, um, we would understand very quickly how many of our customers were impacted. It may not be 100%, it could be 50% of them <clears> that we would know um, who to reach out to and we'd have different ways of reaching out. Um, could be uh, email alerting on the portal, it could be phone. Um, we would need to kind of prioritize yeah. um, who to contact and how to get the message out quickly. But. I think there was one mega event where we were actually communicating out Yeah, to proactively, and, and it was, quickly. you know, there's been a few mega events, as, as we would term it. Um, and Arctic Wolf actually came up with a, a Log4j deep scan tool that they released open source to the community to help people uncover it uh, in their environment and, and help them with, with remediation of that. So as soon as, because that was a moving feast, right? It was, it was this level of vulnerability, and then all of a sudden it was a 10, you know, alarm bells ringing. Uh, so as that whole picture unfolded, we, we were updating what we were doing, proactively reaching out to customers. And because we retain the, the logs for 90 plus days, we're able to replay stuff through the pipeline to look for new things like Log4j, a new unknown event that, that wasn't seen or known about until then. Uh, and that helps us be proactive and say, out of our three and a half thousand customers, uh, there's, you know, in that particular case, a thousand affected, <laughs> whatever it might have been. There was a lot of them affected, right? Uh, and we were round the clock contacting those customers. Of course, we alert into our portal and customers get notifications of, of something in the portal. But yeah, we proactively reach out by phone, uh, email, etc. as well. I don't think this is working anyway. Sorry? It doesn't have the voice, but it's Oh, okay, I shouldn't have spoken so loudly, sorry. <laughs> Any other questions? If you'd like to learn more, of, hopefully you see our stand up on the, on the show. Yeah, we're, we're at a stand with cool spirit today, so please come and speak to us, or I'll hang around here if anyone wants to speak to me now, that's fine. But yeah, I think I'm hungry and you're hungry too. <laughs> Thank you.